And like women in my life, like I grew up in a matriarchy. The women are the most interesting things. They're the ones who tried with me. I could relate. Ah, it's, it's a horribly embarrassing thing, but I was the guy that was the friend to the girls who were having wild lives. Right. And so they would come, after having sex and being like high as a kite, they would come into my bedroom and talk to each other and talk to me. Yeah. And I was like the eunuch that could hear it all, you know? <laughs> right. The, the forever the best friend, yeah. never the one who's getting, yeah. who's banging. For, with these two <laughs> particular people. Ah. And, and then whatever, I'm just sort of built like, I don't know. I just like, I'm interested in women. I always have been. Hi, I'm Kim, and welcome to this episode of Vice Talks Film. Today I'm joined by director Mike Mills, who previously directed Beginners. He's back with an intensely autobiographical tale. It's a coming-of-age story called 20th Century Women, and it's basically about the women who raised him and taught him how to be a man. When you were born, I told you life was very big and unknown. There were animals and cities and music. You'd fall in love, have passions, have meaning. But now it's 1979 and nothing means anything. And I know you less every day. I think maybe you guys can help me with Jamie. How do you be a good man? What does that even mean nowadays? Don't you need a man to raise a man? No, I don't think so. I think you're what's going to work for him. Well, it seems so real. You just feel guilty because it's just me and you. You don't know what I'm feeling. Mike? Hi. Hi, thanks for joining me today. Yeah. Um, I loved the movie. That's nice. Yeah, I yeah. really, really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, it's in another intensely autobiographical story from you. Uh -huh. But the, the seed of it. What if I was lying? What <laughs> if it wasn't? You know, what if I made up all this stuff? This, you just constructed your whole yeah, backstory. Yeah, I just told everyone that that's what my mom was well, like. Well, that would be a wonderful I'd film be a in itself. I would genius if I could have done that. Yeah. I, I watched an interview of you recently where you said, oh, I should have made my elevator pitch as time goes by meets the Buzzcocks. Mm -hmm. But could you maybe expand on that? Like, how, how would you describe this film and, and what it's about? The seed of it is really that I was raised by women, and women taught me what it means to be like a man and a woman, and what freedom maybe is, or how to maybe be yourself. And the story is really based on my mom, character's named Dorothea, played by Annette Benning. She is 40 when she has this kid. Now she's in her 50s with this skateboarding punk rock 70s person. But she's really from the Depression era, kind of represented by the song as time goes by and everything embedded in that song. And he's sort of everything that's embedded in punk. and. How is she going to reach out to him? And she's a single mom. And she recruits these two women, played by Greta Gerwig and Elle Fanning, to sort of help raise him. And, um, you know, chaos ensues. And not much raising of him happens. And if anything gets pushed around and, and expanded, it's her. Like the mom gets sort of forced into a new place or a new understanding or a slightly more expansive place. This is based on your mother, mm -hmm. um, but you originally, the, the, the sort of kernel of inspiration came from when you were making Beginners, which was about your father, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it was during Beginners and um, inside Beginners, there's a little moment with a character based on my mom. And it's, we only shot with her for like two or three days, but um, it was fun. And my mom is sort of like a really wild creature and very much a mystery to me and like a real trickster figure like real proto-feminist wanted to be a pilot in world war ii odd person to be your mother a little bit more like humphrey bogart than a mom mm -hmm. you know and i just got a whiff of it doing beginners and i was like oh maybe i could do this and and then it kind of grew from there and then uh greta gerwig's character abby's based on my sister mm -hmm. who came to new york and discovered punk and discovered her kind of um sexuality that's more empowering to her. Yeah. You spent a lot of time kind of going back and forth with Annette Benning, um, you know, I guess develop, familiarizing her with the character, right? Uh, uh. So ha you sent her movies that your mom liked to watch and... She was kind of, I'm not joking, she really did feel like Bogart. She was kind of butch and 
didn't talk about herself, didn't talk about her inner life, didn't talk about her secrets, right? And when it came to writing her, I was kind of like, ugh, I'm supposed, you know, supposedly I know my mom so much, I'm making a movie about her, but I don't know how to do this, you know? Yeah. And one of the things that helped me a lot was studying films from the 30s and 40s, which I just kind of, watching them, the women have such a great subversive sense of humor, mm -hmm. and they love like wisecracking, and they kind of have more bandwidth than women do in a lot of movies nowadays. Which like is funny, right? 30s women heroines, you know, they, they're they not so male dependent in the film, mm -hmm. and they're just more subversive, like they get away with a lot more. Yeah. And it felt like a lot like my mom, you know? And then actually Humphrey Bogart's dialogue felt so much like my mom, so if I just like flopped the gender, it was easy. So me and Nat started talking a lot about that and Bogart and those kinds of movies and that and someone who was like steeped in that kind of culture, mm -hmm. you know, as a way to talk about her. And then just lots of stories about my mom and pictures of my mom and all that. All with the idea not to like mimic my mom or be really precious about my mom even, but just like to feed the actor to hopefully make a good movie. Do you think you're happy? Like as happy as you thought you'd be when you were my age. Seriously? You don't ask people questions like that. You're my mom. <laughs> Especially your mom. Look, wondering if you're happy, it's a great shortcut to just being depressed. Give me that. I mean, obviously, Annette Benning is an incredible yeah. actress, yeah, yeah. and it's a great coup to get her to yeah, do anything. Totally. But, um, you know, talk to me a little bit about what you <laughs> what you wanted or what you liked about her for this well, so, role. So when you cast someone like Annette, someone like me, you don't get to like audition them. So you, no. you, you have like <laughs> lunch or dinner, right? <laughs> right. And so you just study all their work. And Annette fits the bill in so many ways, right? But the thing about her that was like, this could be really good is that she's kind of a punk. Like she does things on her own terms. And yeah. it's in her performances a bit. She's not a usual woman and she's a strong woman. You get that sense. She's intelligent, and then you kind of just get the sense, well, put it this way, when I met her and, and heard her talking about the script, she's a deep mom. Like She's a mom of four, she's a complex mom, and she just has like a lot of emotional intelligence. She's mm -hmm. just smart, right? And like not, again, like smart and like completely not deferential to how you're supposed to be. And I was like, woof, that seems like mom to me. That seems like really right on. And with all these characters, you did you did make the mixtapes, right? Like mm -hmm. the things, the songs that they would have listened to, mm -hmm. um, which I, I love that. Yeah, it really helps to find the character, and, it, and music operates on such a magical, non-cerebral level. So sort of like giving someone like a little energetic key to the character. So for for Elle's character, it was Rhiannon by Fruitland Mac, and Billy was No Expectations, Rolling Stones, and we would play the stuff on set too. If I knew a scene was coming with one of those actors, I'd play like their music. Um, Dorothea Annette's character is like Glenn Miller and Louis Armstrong and stuff like that, and, and Greta and Lucas's music is of course all the punk stuff. Yeah, Lucas Jade Zuman, he really hasn't done that much. Yeah, yeah. Was it important for you to real f to find an unknown to play this this part? It wasn't like the key thing. I'm, I'm happy to have found an unknown. He did one thing, he was just the right person. Why? He, like there's these physical things, like okay, he's, he was 14, and I wanted him to be, still have a boy aspect to him, not be like 16, I wanted him to be like pre-sex, but like, it's like gonna happen any day now. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and that's actually a really trippy space, and hard, you can smell it when you have it, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And then certain, their boys were like great actors. You could just tell they were sexual. They've already then, passed that point. And then with Alice, it's like, oh, this is a different story. Mm. I need someone who like hasn't crossed that line. Yeah. And you can just kind of feel it. And then I needed someone who was like kind of heady or cerebral or like a little older than he really is uh, because he's lived with his mom like this. And my mom was like that. She never treated me as a kid. So I was always like expected to be sort of like an adult. Mm -hmm. And Lucas just operates like that. And then there's something about Lucas which is like just misplaced enough that you can see him being a punk kid. And a lot of kids like in Hollywood, whatever you want to call it, like in the film biz, they're just too pretty and too, too like a brand muffin to be <laughs> into punk. Yeah, yeah. And Lucas has like a little spice to him. 
Did you have women talking to you about sexuality like that when you were a kid? Yeah, I uh, well, I had my so I have my sisters are like ten and seven years older, and they're so they're born in like the fifties, right? So they're teenagers in the seventies. So they're in it. They got some stuff going on. Yeah, you know, like. They has I, I don't really want to tell stories, but <laughs> there's some thick stories. Like they were living it, okay. And I'm witnessing it, and so they're getting like in trouble and not. And also, as they get a little older in their 20s, and I'm a little older, I'm like 10. Da, 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 they're having relationship issues. They're just having life issues, and they're I'm their little brother. They're telling me about it, you know. And I'm and I'm around. Yeah. And I'm interested. I became the listener to the to. A whole lot of stories, but you're important as a person in girls' lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I grew and I changed. Sure, <laughs> I, 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 I de-unicked myself. I learned how to do that because, but from women teaching me how, yeah. kind of like Abby does to Jamie in the movie. Like I had, I had women who are a little older said, like, okay, dude, you got to stop this, and this is how you're gonna achieve the relationship you want. <laughs> this is how you're gonna get laid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of my favorite lines in the movie is. Um, Never have sex with just the vagina. You have to have sex with the woman. Yeah. Did anyone ever say that to you? Because I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was definitely brought up with that kind of perspective. I remember my sisters being like, feeling like, ah, oh, the, the guy I'm going out with is a dick, and you're not going to be a dick, and I'm going to show you how. But not like it's quite as sexualized as that. <laughs> it's very specific. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that line actually Billy improvised. Really? Yeah. Oh, but it's so it. right on for his character, and Billy. You know, part of his character is that, like, he's read um, Our Bodies, Ourselves. It's, like, part of the story. He's been at home birth. You know, he's, like, a gentle Don Juan, mm -hmm. you know, who's, like, who's interested in the soul of the woman. Yeah. So, and so it was so genius that he, that popped out. It's, like, totally perfect to character. I feel like when you get stories from real life or people's memories, they have this, like, untidiness. Like, they don't fit into, like, a script formula, mm -hmm. which makes them really meaningful and, like, feel more authentic and just have these unpredictable nooks and crannies that just smell real. So I'm always hunting for that kind of stuff, either in my memory or through another person. And it's my favorite kind of... I like sewing together things I found rather than, like, inventing stuff. That's a good note to end on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.